Hi everyone, and welcome to this tutorial. Today we will include the wear model in the simulation of a sack mill. Let's get started. Create a new project and save it accordingly. Next, click on Study to write some details of the project. Now go to Physics, make sure the gravity is enabled, and select the Rolly Resistant model. Turn on the modules that will help to collect additional data. You must do it before solving the module. Next, set up each of the previously selected modules following the steps provided. Right-click on Geometries to import the STL file for this project. Once imported, drag and drop the geometry into the workspace. Use your mouse to rotate, pan and zoom. You can also change background and text colors. We are going to create the rotational motion. We will divide this into two parts, one with rotational acceleration and the other with a constant rotational speed. Be aware of the units, because in this case we use RPMs as reference. Now assign this rotational motion to the geometry and redefine the axis size. At this point we can enable the wear model on the geometry. The RCAD model is used in Rocky to describe the wear of materials due to sliding contact. Additionally, reduce the triangle size for the mesh. Let's see this in more detail. For wear modeling, it is recommended to include only the internal surface of the geometry, as 3D elements can become distorted, affecting the accuracy of the model. So, we need to balance accuracy and processing time. In this model, a size of 0.5 meters is sufficient. In this step, we will duplicate the geometry to enable further comparisons. This second geometry will be used as a reference and it won't be part of the simulation, so disable the options as shown. For this model, create two materials, one for the rocks and another for the steel. Be aware of the density values. And now, set up their interactions by adjusting the coefficients for each pair. Let's move on to creating the two particles, steel and rock. Both are spheres in this demo. For the rock, assign the appropriate material and the specified particle size distribution. For the steel, repeat the process, but define only one size.
Here we create the indel boundary condition, but in this case, a volumetric inlet is more appropriate. For that, define the particles included in that inlet, their total mass, and the location of the seed point. Now, before solving the model, enable the contact data for Fortin analysis and create the periodicity, as the geometry is only a slice of the whole domain. Notice that the axial direction is the set axis. Finally, set up the solver options and run the model. Check the results as usual. Go to the bar and click on the play button to see the animation over time. Change the variable as you prefer in the particle coloring tab. To analyze the where, we need to create a variable to observe the result in deformation. We will name this variable radial deformation, which represents the deformation in the xy plane. Follow the steps to create this variable, and then simply drag and drop it to the workspace. This is one way to get the wear results on the surface. Let's create an animation to see the changes over time using the reference geometry we created before solving the model. Go to Tools, Animation, and select the frames you prefer to create the animation. In this demo, I picked frames for each second of the solution for the position shown. You can see the changes in the geometry as time progresses. But there is another option to get and analyze the worn geometry. Select the time you prefer in the results tab and export the worn geometry as an STL file. You can open it in Space Claim or Discovery and compare it to the reference geometry. Use the tools available in the Facets tab, but to compare both geometries, go to the Measure tab and then click on Deviation. And that's all for today. Thanks for watching.